Greetings. Hola. Happy Global Love Day. Happy Global Love Day. Happy Global Love Day from Soul Twin Messiah. I am the Blue Rocker. And I am Oshala. And we are here for our annual celebration of the beautiful holiday, Global Love Day, created by our friends Harold and John at the Love Foundation. Thank you so much for doing this. Whose mission is to inspire us to love unconditionally, as we feel certainly is in our nature, or perhaps even most best interest, if you just want to look at it practically, for us to be doing. Certainly a worthwhile mission. Why not? <laughs> So, um, <laughs> happy Global Love Day, welcome, and hello. We love you. We are here to offer support, comfort, words of, wis words of wisdom, words of insight, words of inspiration, words of love, support, positivity, connection, and unity. And that is what we are all about over here at the duo of Soul Twin Messiah. Someone's chiming in. What do you have to say, brother? Oh yeah, it's Mupriya Roy. Hello, hey, Mupriya. Mupriya from Send India. Virtual hugs from Soul Twin Messiah. To Kanor and Angelia too. So, Global Love Day and the mission of the Love Foundation is to inspire people to love unconditionally, to embrace our human family as what it is, our human family. Uh, if the science is there, why not put our hearts there too? <laughs> our hearts are there whether we acknowledge it or not, or know it or not. But if we live as though we believe that to be true, imagine the world we could be living in if that were our story we were telling. And it's all part of just us trying to write a new story, one away from fear and ego, and certainly unconditional love is a part of embracing the truth of love that we are. But you can call it anything you want, but let's do the opposite of what we're doing right now, which is separation, division, hate. Hating each other for why? Isn't it time to stop that? I was blessed with a beautiful lesson this morning in my own home with some guests who are staying with us and absolutely it's time and we should and we would love to and we acknowledge it's very difficult to do given that our modus operandi is to operate on autopilot and we have so many multiple triggers that can attack past wounds and traumas that we carry with us and then they cause us to exhibit behavior that is driven by that negative emotional state that we experienced when we took in what was said. And I literally said to someone this morning that for the material that I've developed for the last 14 or so years, Secret Powers of Love, that the primary fundamental tenet of Secret Powers of Love is that we never speak the fear. And before I even had a chance to explain that any further whatsoever, unpack it and give some, some guidance and some context, immediately the response was, oh, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and, and I, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is such a beautiful example of what we would value and benefit so much from gaining a further awareness about in ourselves. And of course, it's one of the most useful and valuable tools in Secret Powers of Love to hold up what I call the fear mirror so we can support one another in discovering and being able to better gauge and monitor our own emotional pulse so we'll know if our actions are coming from some level of negative emotion that is driving us to be defensive or combatant or disputing or any kind of conflict. It's not love, right? Clearly it's not love and we want to get to love. And the beauty of the, the whole lesson of the day is that in order to access all this openness and receptivity and opportunity to discuss and digest and develop new ways to find a way to live less fear, more love, more harmony with one another, is the magic of the deep breath. It's incredible. It diffused everything this morning. And once it happens, once we agree, hold on, I am being driven by negative emotions of some kind, let's take a couple collective deep breaths and do, literally do that. It's a, a, a minute or so of awkward silence, but it's a chance to reset. And once we take the deep breaths, blood pressure is lowered, brain is reset, we can now access the intelligent part of our brains rather than just the, the old reptilian, you know, fight or flight response of the brain and think, what do I want? What am I trying to convey? What, what could I learn from this person in this moment that might benefit me? Even if I never use it, even if I, I shrug it off the minute I walk away, but let's at least have a harmonious, comfortable human uh, experience together while we are together for this precious time. So I invite you to join us in that precious time of togetherness and that we all acknowledge that we have 
emotions in us and they get triggered by so many things that we're experiencing and taking in on our radar of perception given how things quote are in our world these days and or we have been for a long 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 never mind that <laughs> have been for a long long time and that we're here to be on the side of history that pursues a path of learning ways to manage our emotions better establish the power of response flexibility, as it's called, so we don't respond automatically knee-jerk from the negative emotion, but that we acknowledge the fact that it existed, taking a deep breath to calm it for the moment, and actually consider what are we trying to do? What do we want? How can we communicate and connect and collaborate and find value in the moment shared? So let's find value in this moment shared because it's a valuable moment to share with you. And really what it comes down to is this. Whether we want to admit it or not, we're all programmed. We're programmed by society. We're programmed by our families. And what we're saying is let's be conscious about what we're doing. Let's start to understand where these things come from so we can reprogram ourselves from fear and ego to love and selflessness. Because this is programmed and this is why we're acting out the way we do. Believing we're separate, all of these things. This isn't the way humanity has always believed, it's just how we believe right now as part of the system. And so what we're talking about, whether it's um, the Love Foundation or Soul Twin Messiah or Marianne Williamson or Rumi or whoever, we're talking about reprogramming our brains to come from a place of love rather than fear. Imagine the things we can do for ourselves in our world and all our other beautiful creatures on this magnificent planet if we were coming from a place of just solutions, harmony, collaborating, supporting one another mutually and figuring things out and just establishing ways of running our world that aren't done in a vacuum with proprietary secrets for a profit at the exploitation of anything in its wake and regulations be damned because that gets in our way of doing what we need to do to add value for shareholders. So that's a massively different MO for how you approach everything you're doing and we're proposing that we figure out at least have conversations Take five minutes that we would have spent with some form of amusement or coping mechanisms to deal with the trauma we witness in every day and use it toward committing to being part of the solution and figuring out how we rise above, how we tell the next chapter of the story to be so different from the chapter we're in and the ones that came before that no one would ever worry about another holocaust or a nuclear bomb or the next recession or how many people are going to be homeless or out of work with the next technology or storm. Because so, here's the thing, you know, fear limits us. Fear limits us to two options and I think we're all pretty aware of this. Fight or flight. Look around the world. That's all we do. And we're freeze. fighting. So fighting we freeze. freeze. A lot of freeze. Yes, yeah, that's right. Flight, I fight, use more freezing than anything maybe. <laughs> Love expands our options and our choices to infinity. There literally isn't anything that's possible when you come from love. As fear, yeah, it's really limiting. There's this is the word impossible. Word. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> there, we go. there isn't anything that is not possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because when you think about it, we're, we are brilliant. We do have millions of ideas, infinity. Between eight billion of us, we have infinite ideas and opportunities to solve all the problems that we experience and to rectify all of the um, negativity and harm in the story that we're doing, the self-harm and the mutual harm, because we can't cope, because it is traumatic, it is sad. People around us are under so much pressure and maybe you are yourself and we need support to nurture us through that so we can come back at life with our head on straight and our heart wired to our actions and our values driving our decisions and that we care and come from a place of caring and that's what Global Love Day represents to us is this conversation and seeking out new secret powers of this magical thing called love, called love, which is a big concept and a big, big word to pack into four little letters there, L-O-V-E. And there are, as with many words, so many multiple interpretations available. And so ours is, yes, it's that. <laughs> Take them all. It's that and probably more than you ever imagined it to be because if you say God is love and you believe God is the creator of all things, then love is the creator of all things. Love is all things. Love is in everything. Everything is imbued with love. And so 
when you, when you look at it that way, love can do no wrong. If something is going wrong, that's probably a fear-based negative emotion. So those are the ones we want to address. We know how to love. We don't need to learn how to love, I don't believe. I mean, that love is innately, inherently yeah. in us, and we're just trying to gain access to it through the veil, the clouds, as I call them, of fear that have accumulated around our heart. If you listen to Gabor Mate, and uh, check out his beautiful recent book he wrote with his son Daniel called The Myth of Normal. But um, <laughs> you talk about the culture in which we live, this petri dish, if you will, in a lab, in this culture in which we, the organism of humanity, are living, there is a lot of toxicity that is built up here, and there are a lot of trauma scars on our hearts, on our psyches, from all of the, the ill that we've witnessed in our lifetime, especially in the formative ages that has such a profound effect on us. This is all part of the programming that Oshala is referring to, and that we would be well served, I think, to address and acknowledge it because it's there and we can deal with it. We can, we can check it out and evaluate it and examine it and we can discuss it and get support for it and nourish it and smooth it over. There are ways to deal with fear and anger and resentment and disdain. There is screaming into a pillow. There's running around the block. There's crying on someone's shoulder. Crying on someone's shoulder is not speaking the fear. It's seeking support. It's pouring your heart out. It's, can I just give a complaint session for a minute where you just lend a, an ear for me to do that and that's all I, I need just to have the catharsis and get it off my chest because the emotions are weighing on me? And do that. It sucks. This thing's terrible and gosh, it hurts. Okay, more breaths, more breaths, more music, more guitar, and we'll get through it. It's amazing the power of breath and connection and mutual support because we nurture one another. We're ultra social is how we operate. And, and, the, and the thing is, you know, like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see. And right now we're all a little bit like deer stuck in the headlights. We're waiting for business to change or government to change. It's not going to happen that way. We have to change. And we have, there are things that we can do right now, like Evan's saying, to start to reprogram ourselves. We can show an act of kindness instead of going out in the world and being angry today. We can, you know, the cashier be, hey, thanks, God, you were great today. You'd be amazed at how much that affects somebody's day. To the day. It brings a smile to their face. These things, while we're doing them, also start to program us, reprogram us from fear to love by just these simple actions of, I'm going to smile right now. I'm going to say a kind word. By making those conscious choices, you're reprogramming yourself from fear to love. It's called doing the work, and it's the most profound thing any of us can be doing. If we want to love thy neighbor as thyself, which is pretty much a golden rule across many teachings, then we're... I believe best to recognize that when we point that finger, there are three coming back at us. And I need to do three times the amount of work that I would ask anyone else to do. And if I was going to move anyone, I wouldn't expect to move mountains, but maybe tiny increments. Because in Secret Powers of Love, we acknowledge we cannot, at the end of the day, ultimately control other people's behavior. And that yep. the more delicately and the more personally and patiently and nurturingly we can coax them into new understandings and broadened perceptions and perspectives, then we can give them the gift of how they can just get out of their own way and let some of that fear go, learn to be proactive in letting that fear go so then we can just be the love we are. It's what's already there. We're already naturally ready to just be buddies or love our mom or, you know, just all of the traditional archetypal relationships that we have with it. Respect our teacher and honor our clergy and, uh, you know, nurture our kids and all the different things, you know, take care of our customers, whatever relationship that we're talking about. Um, bringing more love doesn't mean conjuring more love as often it means letting go of the concerns and fears we have that things won't go smoothly or that we will be rejected or will anger or upset someone or they will do it to us. So this is just what we're talking about. Inspiring people to love unconditionally. Imagine, we're all about that. Imagine if your, your day started off by, I'm, how many people can I comfort and support today? How many people can I bring security to? If we all did that, we would all feel comforted and supported. We'd all feel a lot more secure. And it's just that simple. I'm going to make it my intention every day to go out and love you instead of be afraid of you. I want to learn about you. I want to realize that what makes us different is actually our greatest strength. This is how we learn and we grow. It's, it's what makes all the beautiful colors of humanity. But right now we're living, you know, we're like the colors of a rainbow all hiding in closets somewhere, afraid of one another. How insane is that? 
myth of normal. <laughs> uh, I think we should maybe give him a little, a little treat, a little tune, some harmonious grooves to soothe you into a happy global love day. It's all about comfort and love. From the Soul Twin Messiah. Look out for our debut single, Comfort You, coming soon to an audio source near you. And we're really excited to be rolling out some music for you so that we've been recording. TikTok, your Instagram, your Facebook, your YouTube. We are learning this stuff and we're figuring out how to reach you. Just look for us to help us find you. One, comfort us. Two, <laughs> one, two. All I can do is comfort you and show you love. I've got no answers from heaven above. Let go of ego. We got no control. All I can do is comfort you and show you love. Let's give them one more then, brother. All I can do is comfort you and show you love I've got no answers from heaven above let go of ego we got no control all I can do is comfort you and show you love hey you want to duet that one sometime on TikTok we'll see you there Happy much love, love day. from soul to a messiah